Hey folks, Craig Danger, Vinyl Record Play, we're back. A little bit of a hiatus there, but we are in fact back. Took a little break from buying records. Basically spent about the last six, seven months buying nothing but records. And uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta slow down in life. Take a breath. So anyway, that's what I've gone ahead and done. And uh, I'm back. Uh, got a little bit of a mail call here today. Uh, so let's just go ahead and talk. Uh, first off, Minnie Ripperton, Stay in Love. Uh, obviously, almost everybody knows Minnie Ripperton from uh, Love and You, uh, kind of her, her big hit, but she was also with Rotary Connection, uh, which was uh, the reason actually why I kind of discovered her. Uh, this is a disco album. Uh, in fact, this would be her only disco album. This, of course, uh, would be a disc, what I, what I call a Discog shipping special in that uh, effectively what we were talking about is a record that costs nothing to ship and I think I got this one for about five bucks not a bad record not a outstanding classic record but again I'm still listening to this one uh, but a good one this is her second last LP one of the things uh, not a lot of people know uh, I mean you do know if you know Minnie Ripperton but she actually passed of cancer I think maybe 79 80 this is, of course, her second last album. What I didn't also know uh, was that Maya Rudolph, uh, famed uh, Saturday Night Live comedian, et cetera, et cetera, is actually her daughter, uh, which blew me away. Uh, but love Minnie, uh, love her, particularly her work with Charles Stepney, Rotary Connection. Uh, I do have a couple of LPs from them, and uh, yeah, they're outstanding. This is less outstanding and very disco, but again, not a bad album, and you can think about Mini Ripton, you can pick these albums up for five bucks, maybe ten. Uh, there are a lot of copies uh, out there in the used bins as far as I've seen. So yeah, worth a pickup. Uh, number two, uh, Bobby Womack, Understanding. This one uh, I actually uh, picked up, uh, this is kind of in a sweet spot, right around here. He was, uh, right after this, he released uh, Across 110th Street, which of course was a black exploitation film, but of course it does have his, the title track, which is, I think, one of the best songs he ever wrote, Across 110th Street. This is still very much Pete Bobby Womack. There, I just actually saw a really cool documentary on um, YouTube about Bobby Womack and there are some interesting ones out there if you just want some to watch on YouTube. The, I think the one that I saw was like a BBC sort of somebody copied it, thrown it on YouTube. So I'm not even going to put the link, but if you're interested, check it out. Anyway, uh, there was a, a point where basically everything was going good for Bobby until basically he decided, oh, let's put out a country and western record. And this would come probably about three or four years before that. Uh, pretty good record. Uh, this one has, um, I Can Understand It, which actually ended up being a big hit for The New Birth. Uh, pretty, like I say, this is his, his sweet spot. This and Communication is another one from 71. This is from 72. So I figured I'd pick this one up. Good shipping on this, good condition on the United Artists label. Bobby Womack from 72. This is one that I actually surprised myself, to be honest, but it was a case again where I had as much shipping as I wanted. And I figured, you know what? Let's get to Hot Wax Greatest Hits. The uh, important thing about Hot Wax is, of course, and the Invictus labels are, of course, that most of this material you cannot find on the streaming. Uh, Spotify or YouTube music and that just basically you can find it on YouTube people will put up a track here and then but th these have never been effectively digitized uh, so got this one mostly for uh, the honeycomb but also for uh, Laura Lee uh, women's love rights been looking around it kind of remains on my uh, list of albums uh, that I still need to find. Laura Lee did two or three albums on uh, the Hot Wax label. I have, uh, I believe the first one, or no, the second one, which was just called Laura Lee. Laura Lee, of course, 
actually dated Al Green for a portion of time as well. Women's Love Rights was her best hit on uh, the Hot Wax label. Uh, like I say, I don't normally buy compilations because you got stuff like Flaming Ember, which, uh, from what I'm hearing from the songs, don't really love it. Hunter Proof had a couple of hits with Too Many Cooks and Somebody's Been Sleeping in My Bed. Again, those aren't really monstrous. One of the things about Hot Wax that you will discover if you listen to some of their stuff is that while Motown had that kind of sound, Hot Wax definitely has that sound, and they or a specific sound, and they use it. So this comp, uh, like I say, if you see this, this one was two bucks with no shipping. I did get this from one ads because I, I do have uh, at least a compilation of one ads where it's the final track on an LP. And it unfortunately, if you've been collecting records for a while, you, you probably are, are well aware of, and I forget, I'm gonna have to put this in, I'll, I'll put it below, but it's basically a scenario where your inner grooves, they get distorted, you get basically not as great a sound quality as the outer grooves. And anyway, I've had that with some of the Hot Wax stuff. And if you know the, the story of Hot Wax, you know that basically they started, everything was great. They were putting out actual hits, but unfortunately what ended up happening is they just ended up getting, uh, like Stax would later, ended up getting caught in distribution problems and all of this because of, not them, but because of their distributors and because of the nature of the record business, which is basically you have to have hit after hit after hit after hit so you can keep paying the distributor to distribute your records. Uh, if anything stops that chain, suddenly, suddenly your distributor's coming back and saying, hey, where's my money? And unfortunately, that's kind of what happens to Hot Wax. But of compilations, if I'm gonna buy one for a buck 99, I'm gonna pick this up any day. And like I say, there are some really good tracks on this one. Um, oh, this one has been uh, kind of like the album of the summer for me for some reason. And I think it's it's just because uh, Lou Rawls' Solon from 1966. Uh, key tracks on this, uh, uh, it was a very good year. Oh, great version of that. Uh, and also, uh, Love is a Hurtin' Thing, which of course was actually Grammy nominated, which is surprising. Not super surprising, as we probably know, the Grammys are kind of always out of touch. Lou Rawls' Solon is not, in fact, as soul as you might think. A lot of it is almost, I would even call it almost Frank Sinatra-esque. So there's, there's a, a real kind of swing in energy to it. But uh, it actually is fantastic. And, and Lou really kind of, his voice completely works for that. He, he can be a, a shouter, like a gospel shouter. But I, I think uh, Lou is much better kind of as a crooner. And like I say, this is a really peak period, Lou, for me. I have tried listening to some of this kind of 70s work. I'm not the biggest fan, but when you get Lou plus David Axelrod, you're kind of always going to win. Um, and like I say, this is on the Capitol label, 66. Um, this one, again, this one was like five bucks. This is in really nice condition. Uh, no skips or anything. So, like I say, I've been listening to this a lot. It just has a good energy. Like, really, uh, I don't want to call him the Black Frank Sinatra, but I think I might have. Uh, and like I say, anything in that late 60s Lou Rawls period, you should pick up. Anything with the Dave, with David Axelrod arranging and producing is kind of a must. So, Lou Rawls, Solon from 66. This one... Solomon Burke, King Solomon and his music. Uh, I was reading a Sweet Soul Music, great book by uh, Peter Goralnik, actually. One of, I think one of the best soul writers ever in terms of writing books. If you take a look at, at books, soul music books, there's just not a ton of them that are out there, unfortunately. And I, I picked this one up because this was a, this was a record store day as you can see, it's got the deluxe, deluxe gatefold. I think this was from like 2013, 2014. It's a record store day. So I figured, oh, we'll give it a shot. It was 10 bucks. This one, uh, I figured, oh, okay, well, no problem. I'll pick it up. We'll see what happens. I don't love it. 
uh, there's kind of a rock and soul vibe. This all, most of this stuff, I believe, is from between like 60 and 65. And frankly, that's not my period for R&B and soul. So while it's good, and certainly you can hear where it's laying the foundation, uh, apparently, like I say, Solomon Burke, really what happened to Atlantic was Atlantic had Ray Charles. Ray Charles made them a whack of money. And then boom, Ray Charles is like, I'm gonna go somewhere else. So they were kind of, oh, what do we do? They were fortunate enough to find Solomon Burke, who I guess apparently kept them through some, kept them, you know, selling records through basically some lean times where they had Ray Charles and then suddenly they didn't have Ray Charles. So anyway, not my bag, this one, but I took a look on Amazon. Apparently somebody's selling this for $80. So I'm like, well, maybe two people should try to sell this for $80. Uh, Solomon Burke, King Solomon and his soul music. Pick this one up too. This one's one that I obviously I had to mail. You're not gonna find this one in the wild. Uh, I had to get this one on Discogs. So uh, I picked up Foxy Brown, Willie Hutch. I'm planning on doing a ranking of the, of the Willie Hutch LPs, at least maybe up until 80. I may go beyond there, but I'm, you know, every, every soul artist who was still kind of alive released stuff in the 90s. I'm not gonna be necessarily touching on that. But anyway, uh, in terms of this, this is, uh, I think, also from 73. Really good record. At first, I thought it was maybe, it was maybe a little bit quiet. But I realized, uh, once I kind of fooled around with my preamp a little bit, that you need to give this the full energy in order to experience the real Willie Hutch. So yeah, this is a really uh, classic LP. Obviously, you got uh, Pam Greer on the cover. You got Pam Greer on the back. You got... Obviously, Willie Hutch on the back. Uh, that's, as far as I know, that's the second time that he put himself on the cover of an album featured someone else. Uh, the first one, of course, being uh, the first uh, Smokey Robinson uh, album, the first Sm Smokey Robinson solo album. He put himself on the back. I mean, I can only respect that kind of uh, confidence, let's call it. So yeah, uh, like I say, this is a, a beautiful, this is like a newer pressing, uh, really nice uh, minty type of cover. You're not gonna find that probably in the wild. So I picked it up and like I say, very good. It's clear that, that uh, he listened to Shaft uh, quite readily and was very excited to sort of create his own. And uh, let's finish this uh, mail call off with Al Green. Let's stay together. Uh, yeah, obviously, Okay, maybe maybe you're not 100% down with the combo leather suede aspect, but this is a classic album. I have not had this on vinyl. I have not had it. And I have almost every single 70s, uh, including his early, his first album, uh, which was on Bell Records called, it might be Backup Train, Anyway, I have all of them except for now Full of Fire. Full of Fire is the last LP that I will need. And I'm going to be doing a ranking of Al Green's LPs. This one is near the top. Uh, obviously, you got the title track. Uh, La La, I Love You, I think is on this one. La La For You, rather. Uh, so You're Leaving. This one's a cover-to-cover -cover classic. This really kind of not only started Al Green's sort of hugeness, uh, although he, he had a couple of hits before this, uh, Let's Stay Together was a number one hit for, I think it was at least three weeks. And yeah, this started basically a triad of classics, which would be this, it would be I'm Still In Love With You and Call Me, three really essential soul LPs that he released within a year and a half. Uh, so this one was the first one to start that off. And a classic, this is obviously, this is obviously like a 2007 repress. I think somebody must have put a sticker on it. Uh, but, really good album. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need an original. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's stay together, Al Green. So yeah, so that was my mail call. Uh, like I say, uh, it is summer. I probably am not going to be doing two uh, shows a week anymore. It was getting a little crazy. 
need to take care of some things in the regular life as well. Uh, but yeah, like I say, I, I'm going to try to at least come out weekly here as the summer goes on. So yeah, uh, like, subscribe, etc., etc., and I will see you on the next one.